all right so what we need to do is uh, maybe we will go back to the camera and make this seven so it is brighter the room uh, let us add a background so we go to render setup and go to Arnold renderer and browse down look for background and we will use a custom map click on the map bitmap select the same HDR image okay and then hit the render button so now you will see that the image is there outside and the scene is a little brighter okay at this time we will add a plane for the glass okay so create a plane leave it glass that plane will be inside the wall here okay then here we will create the frame so we'll create a tube just create a tube and height segments is one sides is four and if this is 85 this will be 80 so the thickness is five and the height is also 5. Okay. So we get this frame which is 5 by 5. We will rotate it and it will be placed inside the wall again over the window and make sure it is inside the wall. Okay, so we'll convert it to editable poly so we can place it correctly so in the left view I'll select the bottom and place it just inside the wall so this is my wall edge this is the side wall okay, so it is just inside the wall Pretty okay here, and then on the top side, we will move it slightly up as well. So we get a window frame. Okay, and then we will assign a material. Same material for the floor goes on to the window frame, and we need a U. B W map modifier which will be box we'll go to gizmo because it is at 45 degrees angle so we will rotate the gizmo at 45 degrees then we will put it fit okay so if you right click and say isolate selection Go to perspective you can see that frame and here it is not properly mapped so you can scale it so you can see the map there the gizmo can be rotated Okay, and then the gizmo can be rotated to 
Okay. So now the the frame is nicely mapped. Okay, so we got the frame. We need to assign a material for the glass. So we will use physical material. Double click. Glass. And we will use the glass thin geometry preset. Select the glass object. Assign material to selection. So we got the glass, we got the frame. Now uh, we need to reduce the noise. So there are two main lights, which is the directional light, and then we have the sky dome. So we need to increase the samples. So we will increase the sample to 9 or 12 for this one. And samples for this to flow. So this will reduce the noise for the direct noise. So there are the noise is generated by the diffuse light, the indirect light, the specular light and the indirect specular light. Okay. So we will we are right, right now fixing the direct light part of the noise. Right. So now we have almost we are almost done you can see that the noise is further reduced I think it will do one more pass and because we increase the samples it is going to take longer time to render I think after this one it's going to do one more pass to reduce this noise further okay so we will wait for that to happen and we will just look at a few elements and then we will cancel it out. So you can see that the rendering is still not done. It will finish this pass and then make one more pass after this. Uh, so the increasing the number of samples will surely increase our rendering time substantially. Okay, so to recap what we have done, you can see it is further reducing the noise there. Uh, we added a direct light for this direct light coming from the window and the creating the shadows. We added a sky dome uh, to pull more light into the scene. We added a portal uh, and changed the Hold on to portal mode because it reduces noise and you also get uh, a more natural looking uh, indirect light into the scene based on what is outside or based on what is there on the image uh, and then we increase the samples for both the lights uh, to reduce the noise as you can see but you can see there is still a lot of noise and we will look at how to further reduce this noise to get at the final result so I'll cancel this and the last step is to go to render settings and here you can see that there are we don't have subsurface scattering so we'll make it zero we don't have volume indirect light so we'll make that zero now diffuse from two can become four Okay, specular can become 4, ray depth instead of 1 will become 2, this ray depth will become 2 and this AA settings will multiply all these by this number. Okay, So if you see this is 144 and the 3 becomes 4, all of a sudden this becomes 256. Okay, So all this is going to tremendously increase your rendering time. So we will make this four this four this four this two this two and this is going to further reduce the noise in the scene if you keep increasing these numbers you will get better renderings 
but more time will be uh, taken for the renderer. So let us render it with these final settings now. And you can see that because of the more ray depth, the scene is brighter because it is bouncing twice. So it, it does add a little bit more noise, uh, more light when you add this ray depth. Okay. And it's going to give you a much better rendering. So if you still have noise, you can then go to Photoshop and you can assign if you look at uh, the layers, uh, this was the original image. Okay, with noise, and then we can add noise reduction modifier and a Gaussian blur modifier to then get rid of those noise into the scene and get a smoother final result for you. And that concludes uh, this tutorial of how to create an indoor scene with Arnold lighting. Uh, it will it will around take around I think uh, eight to twelve minutes to do this rendering. From one minute and twelve seconds, uh, it, it bumps up to uh, eight to twelve minutes to do the rendering with the increased samples. Illustrator as resources are distributed, the rendering becomes fast.